Hey everyone, this is Kendrick Coleman and welcome back to this eighth video in the series where we're looking at the vSphere web client. Now my environment has changed a little bit because it's screwed up and this is probably the video that has taken me the longest to complete because I've been troubleshooting what's going on. Well, first that you can see is I'm actually logged in with the root account because for some reason AD is no longer working and I don't feel like going around and fixing it because it's in August already and this is going to be released soon so it's not that big of a deal. But secondly is my storage. When I was testing this out, trying to run a virtual machine, the storage wasn't working correctly. So I figured out it's a problem on my Synology NAS. So everything wasn't working in that aspect. So what I did is I just created an open file or VM on top of my Synology NAS. And everything works fine now. So I'm not going to have any data store clusters. I'm just going to be putting it directly to a data store. But the thought process is pretty much just the same. We're just going to be able to pick and choose a data store where to put it. Whereas if it was a data store cluster, you just pick a data store cluster and let vSphere choose where to put it. Now, before we get going, what we want to do is we want to create a new folder. So if I go to my VM and templates view right here, and I look right here, well, one thing I want to do is I want to create a new folder inside of here. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to right click on this, my data center object view, go down to all vCenter actions, and from here I'm just click new VM and template folder. And I'm just going to call this templates. Click OK and now the new templates folder is created. So now I've gotten to this part where I can actually start deploying virtual machines and putting them inside my templates folder so I have a nice clean view of everything that I want to do. By default it's probably the best idea is to create a new folder for every kind of virtual machine or every kind of category you have whether it's production, dev, HR, finance, uh, corporation A, corporation B. Um, create stuff into folders because it's a lot easier to start viewing all the virtual machines that are now associated to that particular folder. So I'm going to go back to the home screen, I'll go down to my vCenter inventory, and I'll look at virtual machines, and of course I can go ahead and add it from this icon right here. Now you have a few different options right here, you can clone, you can deploy from a template, you can convert, but since we don't have anything, we need to create that first template, I'm going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. This is going to be my 2008 R2 template, and I am going to throw this in my templates folder. Go ahead and click next. And then from here, I'm going to throw it into my 51 cluster. Storage profile. If I had storage profiles created, uh, that could be used. But instead, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click, click a particular data store. Of course, this could be a specific, I guess you could say, data store cluster. But since we don't create that, I'm just creating a specific data store. I am going to have it compatible with VM hardware version 9, which is the new one in ESXi 5.1. And it automatically defaults if I choose Windows to 2008 R2, but if we click the drop down, you can see that if we move up, we actually have Windows Server 2008, which has kind of been rebranded to 2012. Um, that'll probably be changed here in the, the next release. But for now, let's go ahead and keep it at R2. Go ahead and click Next. Now, for me personally, I like to customize the hardware in a particular 2008 R2 server. So what I like to do is I like to change the memory from 1 to 2048 because, at least in my home lab, I don't really need that much. I'm also going to change the hard drive to only use 60 gigs. As you can see, if I do a drop down, you can see that I can actually choose a lot of different things inside a specific setting. So now, if I... If I was putting this on like a block level data store, I can change it to thin, thick, you know, anything through here. But you have to make sure you do this before when you're actually creating the machine. So I can go ahead, as you can see, everything within here has the ability to have a way to be able to, I guess you could say, customize at a very granular level. Now if I go down here to the, the iSCSI, I like to change this to VMware Vera Paravirtual. And on the network side, I have it connected to my particular DV switch, um, the particular port group I want, so that's fine. But I also like to change this to VMXNet3 because that's the best practice. And then that's really about it, all I need to change on here. I don't really need to change anything else inside of here. So if I have particular things I want to be able to do uh, with 3D graphics, if I have the right hardware available, I can be able to enable that. Uh, if I want to add a new device, if I want to add a USB controller and then later be able to do host through USB redirection, I can I can add that, right? So there's a lot of different things in here. If you want to make something in RDM, it's, it's always possible through here as well. But for now, that's all I really need. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next, click Finish. As we can see, it's creating the virtual machine up here. 
and now we have our 2008 R2 machine actually completed. So before we power this on, let's go ahead and click on it and we can actually go to the summary tab of the virtual machine itself. We can see all the different features and all everything that it has on it. So you can see that, you know, what we what we have, what's the VMware tools compatibility, of course it's not running, uh, what compatibility it's actually set at. So if you have stuff that you're bringing over from a mobile environment, this is where you can easily start seeing that in a, in a nice GUI little mode. But since we need to go ahead, we need to make sure we actually install our VM, we need to edit the settings of this real quick and we need to mount an ISO. So let's go ahead and we'll edit the settings. And under the CD DVD drive, we will click a data store ISO file. I have moved over a 2008 R2 image onto here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that. Click OK. Make sure I have connect clicked on. And as you can see, if I scroll down, there's really not a whole lot of stuff I can change right here. Well, there is, but there's really nothing I need to. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to go re reconfigure the virtual machine. Now that that's done, we can go ahead, right click on here, and we can power it on. So let's go ahead and power on our virtual machine. This is going to take just a few seconds to power on. Now that it's powered on, the screen's refreshing. As we can see, this console thing is changing right here. But let's go ahead and we will click to launch the console of the virtual machine. Now this new screen pops up right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just continue and accept the cert. Once it's accepted, as you can see, now I have my regular default Windows 2008 install screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and just go through the steps that I would to go ahead and configure a 2008 R2 server for the first time. After I get to the point of loading the PVSCSI driver, I will let you go and I'll come back. But first, so we're going to go ahead and choose our standard build. Click Next. I'm going to accept the license terms. Click Next. And then for the custom advanced, now I actually need to go and need to load a driver real quick because it doesn't see any, any hard drives. And this is because we need to be able to look at the actual, sorry, we need to actually load the PV SCSI driver. So I see this bug error a lot where it actually has an internal error occurred. I always click no because it's really not that big of a deal. Now from the floppy drive, I can just go down here and I can say connect to a floppy image on the host data store, click the VM images, and then from here, go down to floppies. And the floppies over here, as you can see, this is the PV SCSI Windows 2008. I'll go ahead and click OK. Let that connect. As it connects, I can go ahead and load the driver. So I'm going to go ahead and click this button right here. It says load driver. I am going to browse to the A drive. Click here, click OK. And now I see there's the PV SCSI, PV SCSI adapter. Click next. Let this load in. Now that it's loaded in, I'm going to go ahead and seize the hard drive that we had configured at 60 gigs. Click Next. And now it's going to start installing Windows as normal. So I'm going to let you go ahead and finish your creation, or you can watch me finish this. And then after that's done, I will see you back here in a bit, and we can learn how to deploy a template. Welcome back. Now through the power and magic of video editing, we can see that I now have the VM actually completed and it's changed midway because now I have a Windows Server 2003 32-bit VM. I was having some trouble uh, doing the 2008 R2 install because for some reason it's throwing up errors about 64-bit and nested. I'm going 5.1 nested with 64-bit on top of 5.0. Yada, yada, yada. So anyway, we actually have a 2003 R2 machine done. So if we want to go ahead, we can install the VMware tools. Just click that button that says to do that. It's going to go ahead and mount it. You can see it's starting the task up here in the right-hand corner. And if we switch over to our R2 template, we can see that we actually have the installation getting ready to go. So you should be able to be installed VMware tools by now. It's not that hard to get up and running. So I will see you here in a second. All right, now we have VMware tools installed. So let's go ahead and refresh this screen right here.
and we can see that we don't have the error anymore that says VMware Tools needs to be installed. We can see the DNS name, IP address, we can see all this kind of stuff now that we have VMware Tools installed. So cool. Now we need to go ahead and make this a template. So let's go ahead and we will go right here and we will shut down the guest OS. Go ahead and click yes. We switch back over to our 2000R2 template. We can see that it's shutting down. That's good. So now we don't really need anything in, in here anymore. So we'll go ahead and we'll exit out of there. And we'll go back to the web client. Let it reset and re, or let it update itself real quick. We can see that it's powered off. Great. Now let's go ahead and we want to move this to a template. Now the easiest way to do that is, of course, you can't really see anything through here. But we can see in all these interactions, we can actually go to the template and we can say we can actually clone it to a template or we can convert it to a template. So let's go ahead and we'll just click convert it. It's marking the virtual machine as a template. And now it's a template. Pretty simple. Now if we ever need to deploy a VM from here, we can go ahead, right click on it. And we can see we can now deploy a VM from this template. We can convert it to back to a virtual machine. We can clone it. So if we deploy a new VM from this template, we get the new virtual machine wizard. We can call this one uh, new Kenny server. Doesn't really matter what we call it. We can put it in discover virtual machines or whatever folder we made because that's best practice. Go ahead and stick it in this cluster. You just saw an error for the floppy, so we can go ahead and fix that later, but that's not a big deal. Go ahead and stick it in a data store, click next, select the clone. We can now customize it if we want, so let's go ahead and let's do that. It says customize this virtual machine's hardware. Let's see what's going on with that as well. So click OK. This is where we get into our specific way to be able to do different things. So first thing we want to do is probably add a new host or guest customization specification. So we'll go here. Uh, we can use a sysprep file. We don't want to. We'll just name this 2003R2. Give it a description if we want. I don't really care about any of this stuff. We'll just say Kenny, Kenny. I'm not going to say computer name. I like to keep this to actually just use the virtual machine name instead of entering a name every single time. Don't feel like entering a Windows license key password. I'll just put in my secret password here. Click next, time zone, everything we've kind of been used to. Let's see, minus five for good old Louisville, Kentucky. We will just go ahead and choose New York, though. Don't need this to anything like that. If we want to use DHCP or if you want to set it as a, a manual static, this is where you can do it as well. Click next. If you want to add it to domain, you can do it from there as well. Drain or new SID. Click next. Finish. And now we can see it's going to go back to the template view. And we are going to have to choose the new 2003 R2 specification we did. Click next. If we want to customize the hardware, this is where we can come. As you can see, there's an existing floppy image. Let's just change it to client device. Same here. We'll change this to client device as we should have done before we put it into a template. So before you make it into a template, make sure you change that to client device and click OK. Um, say we want to add in a USB controller. Go ahead and add that in. Go ahead and click Next. And we'll click Finish. And now it's going to start cloning and creating this new virtual machine. Uh, this will take a little while. Doesn't really matter, but this is really just the core of using a virtual machine with inside this new vSphere web client. So with that, I will end this session, and thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.